special guest star is Jill St. John. She killed him. Now, ten years later, she wants to steal away my little brother? Now, you listen. She left me with nothing. There's nothing looks better to you when you got a lot of financial problems in a gullible Texas with more dollars and cents. I think I like you, Mr. Starbuck. Movies, Texas? Help! He tried to kill me! Grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence, but it's just as hard to mow. What does it take to unload you, Mr. Starbuck? It's a wrap. I'll be dead. When Texas was young, she lived by the gun. Her heroes are buried in the sand. And deep in my soul, wherever I go, I know who I am. I know where I stay. Whispering in the wind, and the wheels begin to spin. Ooh, it's just a matter of time, and I'm gone again. I'm gone again. Capstone, how was the flight? After four months in Africa, it's great to be home. The house, sir? No, I better go to the studio first. I hear we have a problem on stage 16 with the government house then. Well, welcome home, Mr. Capstone. Thank you, Hank. changing for dinner shortly, and I don't want to take my shower until after he's come and gone. Yes, Mrs. Capstone. We don't get along, but is a gun really necessary? Your father insists I keep it. I hate guns. I've kept it out in the pool house, but since he's coming home, I thought I'd put it back in the bedroom drawer where it belongs. Too bad he's not here. I wanted to talk to him. Are you still having trouble with the African, or is that still the title? Changing titles is the sine qua non in film. Oh, I see another foreign saying has crept into your vocabulary. Jean-Claude is having a profound effect on you. Jean-Claude and I are merely friends. He's someone to laugh with while your father spends half a year supervising a movie in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's very sweet of you to be looking after your father's marital interests, Stephen. Especially since the two of you do nothing but yell at each other over long distance. Well, the picture's a mistake. I told him that. In that case, you will have a promising career as a shoe salesman. Yeah, and maybe you'll be able to go back to being a topless dancer in Vegas. It's gonna be real tough on all of us. I've got all my things from the fitting out in the pool house. I'm gonna shower and change for Mr. Capstone out there. Don't disturb me. But in about an hour, put the presents on the small table by the pool. Yes, ma'am.
Hello, Charles. Rachel, what are you... It's time for some script changes, darling. You'll never get away with it, Rachel. Especially if what I hear about you and Jean-Claude is true. Now, put that gun away. You want to know the best part? Stephen's going to be arrested for your murder. What a shame you two don't get along better, all those screaming arguments. That's showbiz. No one would ever believe that Stephen did this. They'll believe it. His fingerprints are on the gun. And now, as they say, our marriage is a wrap. <laughs> determined to make a donation and have this Susan Finney set up a daycare center. But we need more time to analyze their program. Huh? Now you set it up and let that Mrs. Finney run it. Well, I'm not at all sure she has the management skills to run a half million dollars you're going to invest. I don't want to see you lose your asset. I've got plenty of assets to lose. I just don't have much time to lose. You ever see a U-Haul following a hearse? Now, let's get it drawn up. Get the papers done. Well, it's done. That's it. Marshal, Marshal, have Celia call the police and have that bum removed. Look at him, he's not even 40. How do people get that way? Daddy used to tell me that a, a man could retire quite comfortably if he could dispose of his experiences for what they cost him. Could be that fella just paid a little too much for his. Tell me where I can find a good restaurant around here? I'm not from this area. You can't tell much about the restaurants in Los Angeles from the outside. Give me along, okay, mister? Well, what? Except they call the police on the inside there. Well, I figured you can either have a free meal with me or you can have one with them. Why are you doing this? I'm just sitting in that air-conditioned bank and got the mist and smell of some dried human sweat. I looked up and there you were. Funny. <laughs> Tell you what, we're only a couple of blocks from my hotel. We'll run by there and you can uh, freshen up a little bit. Who knows, maybe I got an extra set of clothes. Then we'll go down and I'll buy the steaks. No strings attached. Okay, if I get a drink. That's fair enough. <laughs> talk much, do you? I mean, you probably don't get too many invitations to be an after-dinner speaker. Look, as long as I'm putting on the feed, don't you think at least I ought to get to know your name? Name's oh. Steve. Yeah, right, Steve. Would you like a little dessert? No, uh, what I'd really like is that drink you promised. You got a drink, iced tea. Right. Nice tea. Good deal. Uh, yeah, I, I got an appointment. If you're so interested in me, how about giving me some money for a cab, huh? I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you the money for the cab if you promise not to go buy a bottle with it. Yeah, it's a deal. My word's good in all 50 states. Uh, we're gonna have to throw this deal up and notarize it or as a handshake, okay? Handshake will be fine. You've been around some, haven't you, boy? I'm really going to be late. I got to go. This is my one day a week. One day a week for what? Polo. Hey. 
Sorry I'm late. It's okay, Steve. I figured you probably couldn't catch a ride. I hate to keep taking your lunch money like this. What are brothers for? I get plenty to eat at home, and I sneak food in my book bag. I'm not exactly starving. Yeah. Guess you're right, huh? Where'd you get the new shirt? It's neat. Oh, I, uh, I met this, uh, this, this Texan guy. Gave him something to eat and some new clothes. What's his name? I don't know. It's Tex. Tex something. I told you last week, you get away from here. I'll get the police again. Do you want that? Charlie, come over here. You take care of yourself now. You're all I've got, okay? I love you, Steve. Did you have a good time at school today? Next door. It's not for sale. It belongs to the Capstones from Capstone Studios. Yeah, I think I heard of them. Didn't the father he die or get killed or something a few years back? That's the one. Remember reading about that in the paper. Much obliged. Service too good out here in the alley either. I told you, leave me alone. Can't you do that? The way I see it, you either killed your father and you can't live with it, or somebody else killed him and you can't live with that either. Either way, that probably makes you somebody worth worrying about. If you want to spend a little time and tell me about it, well, I'll be glad to listen. Maybe I can help. Silence is not always golden, son. Sometimes it's just plain old yelling. I tried. I did my best, but she beat me. She being your stepmother, Rachel. I loved him. I killed him. Maybe I believe you. But I'm not going to talk about it out here in the alley. Let's go get something to eat. Have some of this fruit. You know, it seems your stepmother got inside your head pretty good. Left you a little messed up. Maybe you were fighting out of your weight class. She never cared about my dad, ever. It was the money, and it was the power. She was off in Africa for four months working on a movie, and then she starts hanging out with this Jean-Claude Bocage. Now, who is he? He's a director. You can use the term so loosely. I don't think he could direct traffic. But, uh... Rachel was his biggest advocate. If we can prove that she had a boyfriend on the side, that'd be a pretty strong motive for her to try to kill her husband. But to pick you up, why? So Rachel had an alibi. Carmelita, she was a, a maid. She said that she saw Rachel in the pool house on the telephone at the exact time of the murder. They, they couldn't place me at the scene of the murder. They never found the gun my dad was killed with. So they let me go, because what the DA called lack of uh, material evidence. That's what they called it. 
You've been doing hard time down here ever since. After my dad was murdered, she inherited the business. She fired me and then uh, started telling everybody I was the one who killed him. Couldn't take it anymore. You know, I followed you over to school. I saw you with that little fella. Is that your brother? Charlie. Yeah, he's my uh, half-brother. He's all I've got. She doesn't, I swear, she doesn't care. She never sees him. She never gives him anything. She's got a nanny raising him. Well, now, let's just suppose that... that I'd take the time out and go and get to know your stepmother. Then let's just suppose that I'd wind up having to get in the picture business. I don't know anything about it. I'd have to have somebody that knows the business backwards and forwards to kind of guide me. I'd have to have somebody that I know I could depend on. Somebody that would, well, give me his word. If the going got a little tough, he wouldn't go back and jump on that bottle again. You're big at people giving you their word, aren't you? Your word, maybe. I mean, after all, it's good in all 50 states, and I don't have to get her notarized. I don't know why you'd want to invest in that studio. The word is they're on the verge of bankruptcy. There's nothing looks better to you when you got a lot of financial problems than a gullible Texan with more dollars and cents. Okay, I'll just let it slip who you are. Much obliged to you. J.J. Starbucks? Oh. <laughs> yeah, guilty as charged, yeah. I'm Rachel Capstone. Tyler Bushnell dropped by my table and happened to mention he was here with you. He said you were in town on business. <laughs> Nothing very big, just little this, little that. Oh, that's hard to believe. I've heard about you. Nothing you do is little. <laughs> Would you like to have a seat? Huh. Uh, Rachel, our court is ready. Uh, why don't you go on ahead and play with Summer Smith? She always wants to play with you, darling. My name's J.J. Starbucks. Yes. Tu m'embarras. Tu me laisses toujours tout seul à table et j'ai l'air d'un idiot. Assez la ferme, mon amour. Maintenant, laisse-moi, s'il te plaît. I'll be at the bar. I'm sorry. He's just a friend, but he's very possessive. <clears throat> what does he do? Oh, he's uh, Jean-Claude Bocage. He's a director at my studio. He's okay, I guess, but I prefer men with more substance. Men who know how the game is played. Men with a rough-hewn, sensitive quality. Yeah, but where are you going to find one of those in this day and age? I think I'm sitting with one. <laughs> yeah, well, if you keep talking like that, you're going to get me all shook up. <laughs> you're not at all what I expected. Most wealthy men don't have any savoir-faire. You have a sense of elan. And I'll say one thing, you sure know how to flatter a fella. And you've got me all pumped up here, and I'm trying to figure out what elan is and where I can go to get some. Maybe you'll give me your phone number and your address where I can come by and pick you up and take you to dinner. And you just call me JJ. Well, got all my best bib and tucker. What do you think? Yeah. You know what's really going to put the old Savoy Fair over the danger zone? When she gets a load of them horns on the car. What? <laughs> Never mind. You know, I got to look at that John Claude today. He's pretty weak around the gills. But on the other hand, I suppose anybody that's around Rachel very long is going to develop a character shimmy of some sort. What did he say? He didn't say anything to me. He's talking in French to Rachel, telling her he was getting tired of her table hopping and embarrassing him in front of everybody. She told him to run a long place. She's working on this big, dumb Texan trying to get enough money out of him for John Claude's picture. You speak French? Got a lot of business over there in France. You know, it's to be on top in this town. I was 28 years old, made two blockbusters. My dad and I were so proud of each other. She came along, turned the whole thing sour. Regret's just about the most useless emotion I think we got. I mean, nothing you can do with it. You can't build on it. Just lay around water in it. You're going to find out it's not your position in life that's important. 
It's your disposition. And as long as we started talking, how anybody who looks like he lays around and sleeps with fleas ever expects to get back where he once was, it's just beyond me. Now, I want to try to help you get there, but I'll be dipped if I'm going to drag you every step of the way. I want a drink. That's all I've been thinking about. We made a deal on that, didn't we? You gave me your word, good in all 50 states, you said. Now, you want to break your word to me, that's up to you. But I gave you my word, too. Et Francaise aux brochettes au jour. Descargot bourguignon, s'il vous plaît. Codo. Non, merci, madame. Merci. Yeah. Yeah. I hope there was chicken fried steak with some white gravy in there somewhere. Hardly, but I think you'll like it. Hey, you know, it's really nice, our meeting like this, because I've been thinking about buying a motion picture studio. I've been thinking about one of the majors, but I really need your input on it. Been looking at Universal, Warner Brothers, Paramount. Which one of those do you think's got the most to offer? Well, they're all very interesting, but... Well, I guess, well... But what? Something the matter with that bunch? Well, no. It's just that they're so big, it would take a great deal of money to get any kind of control. Don't worry about the money. That's something we got plenty of. JJ, I hate to discuss business on our first date. But I have been thinking of selling off a piece of Capstone Studios. That you see. Huh? What a coincidence, huh? Then you and I just about to become friends and all. It really struck me as strange, too. It was the furthest thing from my mind when we met. Oh, don't think there's a doubt about that. So why don't we cut right to the bottom line? And tell me how much this studio you want to sell. We are experiencing some short-term banking difficulties. We need to extend our line of credit in order to complete this year's slate of feature films. I'd have to get my accounting department on it. That could take a few days. No. No. I don't deal with accountants. They get on my nerves. Now, you've got a figure in mind, and so do I. In negotiations, uh, each of us tries to get as close to his own set of figures as possible. Now, I'll tell you exactly what I want. I want 51% control. I want control of the central audit, and I want to pick the auditors. And I'm going to give you 1% under the appraised market value of your company, and I'll also underwrite all of your loans for the next 12 months. I'll sell you 49% retained control myself. I'll give you a voice on the board equal to your percentage of ownership. You pay me $2 over the current trading price, and we'll cap it on the downside at 3 I don't care which auditing firm you use, as long as it's accredited. Now, we've got a lot of ground between us, Missy. I've got all night. <laughs> then we'd better get started. Again, man. Forget that 49. Ain't It's a deal. But how do we document this? I mean, I don't like to let things lie too long. It's all done. It's all right here. All we got to do is sign it. It's perfectly legal. You're joking. No, sign it. I'll initial it here. <laughs> I'll get Francois back there to witness it before we leave, and <laughs> it's done. Now tell everybody you have completed the deal. Texas style. I'll get this cleaned up, photocopied, and sent around to you tomorrow, but as of right now, we're partners. I don't mind telling you this now, 
But you came along just in the nick of time. You don't say. executive in mind. Tell Charlie it's going to be... One we saw outside the bank. Right. Later. I thought y'all had to go to Paris to get these kind of shots. It's an RP shot. RP. RP. I give up. I know it don't stand for right pretty. <laughs> Rear projection. We photograph a moving plate of a street in Paris, and then we project it on that screen up there. Then when we photograph it, it looks like the actors are driving down a street in Paris. <laughs> Come on. Good heavens. There's really nothing happening on this stage. Woohoo, boy, it's a whopper, though, it. Oh, stage 16 is where we put all our big sets. Uh, yep, matter of fact, this is the one your husband was killed on, isn't it? Well, yes. How did you know that? Yeah. After we made our deal, I had my people back at Mark. They'd do a little profile on you. And I remember reading that in there. Killed at stage 16 of his own studio. I hope my bringing it up doesn't upset you. Well, quite frankly, it does. I loved my husband very much. I tried several times to get to see him in Africa. I actually made it once. The studio arranged it for me. But he was out in the jungle, and it was hard to get to see him. And the first day he gets home, his son kills him. Sometimes I think I'm over his death, but the memories come flooding back. You know, my research showed that they gave Stephen a lie detector test, and he passed it. That's why they had to let him go. But you refused to take one. Why was that? Just what the hell are you getting at? Are you accusing me of something? Daddy, you tell me, Jerome. Whenever it comes to picking a business partner, you better be just as careful as picking a wife, because if you pick wrong, they're both going to keep you up nights. This conversation is beginning to annoy me. Now, let's go. Sorry, I didn't mean to annoy you, ma'am. I'm trying to get to know you a little better. You don't know her. The woman, she's impossible. Yeah. I've never known anybody so bad at their worst they were impossible, or so good at their best that they were easy. What the devil is he doing here? Get off my lot immediately, Stephen, or I'll have you arrested. Well, uh, look, he, he, he said... I don't care what he said. I'm calling security. Now, you hold on. That would be a poor way to start a partnership, but throwing your chief executive officer off the lot the first day? My what? The young man that's going to be running this place for the next 12 months, as he did for his father, and he did a good job. He so... murdered my husband. No, he didn't kill anyone. And I think it'd be a good idea for you to start remembering that I've now got controlling interest in this studio. And it would almost be dangerous for you to ever question my choice of executives. Oh, I get it now. This is a setup. No, this is a business deal. And it's all recorded right here on this piece of linen and is witnessed by two waiters in fancy suits. We'll see what my lawyers have to say about that. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid somebody's going to be off surprised when she hears what they have to say. We'll see. And you, you may have just made the worst mistake of your life. JJ. JJ, I, I can't do this. Sure you can. 
It's all right here on this piece of French linen, son. It's legal, and it'll stand up in any court in the country. Now, there's not anything she can do to either one of us if we don't let her. Right now, I'd like to finish my tour of the lot, if you'll be kind enough to show it to me. She was telling me that that gun never turned up anywhere. Yeah. It really surprised me, too. I, I kept waiting for it to pop up. It was a 32 caliber bullet that killed my dad. The night of the murder, I went over to the house, and Rachel was carrying a 32 caliber Beretta. We're standing there, and we're having a conversation in the hallway. She drops it. I picked it up. She was wearing a pair of gloves. Now, that struck me funny, Todd. But it wasn't until later that I realized if she used that gun to kill Dad, my fingerprints would have been on it. The DA would have had the evidence he needed to convict me of murder. Why did she go to all that trouble and then not plant the gun? I wonder. There's some place that gun could have got hidden on that stage for all of these years. Could you get me a set of plans for stage 16? Do you, uh, you think you can prove she did it? I don't know that yet. We know she's got an ironclad alibi. It's gonna be up to you and I to shred it. Be careful. Be careful. She's a person who spends much time looking in mirrors. And she didn't leave at all that night. After Steve left, she asked me to put the presents that she had bought for Mr. Capstone on the table by the pool. It was a very cold night, I remember. And she had decided to shower and change in the pool house. Did she do that very often? Never before. She said that her pink dress that she had had refitted was in the pool house, and she didn't want to carry it upstairs. Pink dress? The one she wore in Beguiling, the movie. She had had it refitted. They had done it that afternoon. She didn't go out. I put the packages on the table at 9.30. She was in her pink dress, talking on the phone. I saw her through the window, walking back and forth. At 10.15, she asked me to call the studio. She was worried about Mr. Capstone. I want to thank you for your help. Steve could never commit a murder. We grew up together. My mother worked for Mr. Capstone. Steve and I used to play together as children. He could never hurt anyone. I must speak with Dominique. This is Dominique. It's too dangerous that you call me here. Paris looks like it's going to fall in 10 hours. There is no time to lose. We'll do it tomorrow. The fox has left his den. We will go to the farmhouse tomorrow to meet the others. We are ready. Nothing will go wrong. Michel and Andrea are at the pier with the Americans. It must be tonight. Very well. We must get word to the Americans. They await my signal. Oh, Many I will die. Like old old movies. Vive la France. Vive la France, Dominique. Let me hold, son. Thank you. What does it take to unload you, Mr. Starbuck? How much? Well, I didn't know it was causing that much trouble. You show up, you buy controlling interest in my studio, then you put the man who murdered my husband in charge. Now, I don't know what constitutes trouble in Texas, but around here, you're trouble. Hey, just between us old rattlesnake hunters, I don't believe the boy killed your husband. I suppose that means you think I did it. Well, I hate to be rude, ma'am, but yeah, I do. And just what do you have as proof, darling? Well, I keep going back to old Jean Paul Bocage and why you kept financing him. No one else thought he had an ounce of talent, made one clunker right after another. Yet you just kept coming up with the money for his next movie. <laughs> why? Then it finally dawned on me. Jean Claude probably knew the real motive for the murder of Charlie Capstone. I don't know what you're talking about. Met a nice lady down there at Wardrobe today. She's been here a long time, and you're never going to guess what she helped me find. I can't imagine. That pink dress you were wearing in that movie right there. So? So? I couldn't figure out a vain woman who enjoys seeing herself in mirrors and reflections in glass. Now, you ain't never going to let yourself gain very much weight, much less three inches around the middle. Yet, it's exactly how much that pink dress had to be let out. Why? only one answer. 
you had to be pregnant. I was pregnant with little Charlie. When we checked the books, not one ticket was made out for Africa for you. Nor was there any reimbursement checks made out. Charlie Capstone was there four months. He came home and was murdered. And seven months later, little Charlie was born. Leading us to believe what? That you were carrying another man's child. And when your husband came back from Africa, it wasn't going to take him very long to find out that he wasn't the father. I underestimated you, but now I'm a true believer. Maybe I can teach you a few things about lack of character and human weakness. So long, darling. Jean-Claude, where are you taking me? Listen, you said you had something to tell me about Rachel. Why are we here? Get out of the car. Say it. Get out of the car. If he gets away, the DA's probably gonna hold him without bail. I made a big mistake. Pushed her too hard. I thought she'd turn on me. Instead, she turned on the boy. I'm up to my ears in current homicides. Why do I want to go into the basement, kicking around, looking at one that nobody can even remember the facts on anymore? Does that tickle you funny, Bo? And because you know that if you can solve this 10-year-old high-profile murder, they're gonna put your picture on the front of the police gazette. Okay, JJ. I gotta file the charge. But I'll talk to the DA and make sure they set bail so you can pull him out. Can't tell you how much I appreciate that, partner. I'll talk to you. You ain't talking much, son. Sooner or later, we're gonna have to talk. Well, I think I can prove her guilty. But I can't do it alone. I've gotta have your help. How? How are you gonna prove it? When I first went to the studio, he showed me a process called rear projection. I was fascinated. I couldn't believe it. But I thought, if they could fool a whole theater full of people with that process, why would it be so impossible to fool one? Now, your stepmother didn't make that many pictures. I looked at found the exact scene that I was looking for, with the pink dress on, walking back and forth with the phone to her ear, and I'm betting that she took the rear projection machine to the pool house. And that's what Carmelita thought she saw. You need opportunity and motive. You've got the opportunity. What's the motive? The motive was her association with John Claude. If you could prove that relationship, but you can't. They were too careful. Never saw anything. I think I can. The question is, is it going to be worth it? If you can prove it, I want to know about it. It was my father. I think when your father came home that she was over two months pregnant with John Claude's baby. It was all over for her. She'd lose the money, the power, the prestige. She couldn't let that happen. You're telling me that Charlie? It's only a theory, but a blood test will prove it, and then we've got a very strong motive. It shouldn't make any difference whether he's a blood brother or not. Love's not something that, that, that can be wasted. It really doesn't make any difference who gives it or how. JJ, that kid is all I had. He's my reason for living. So what's changed? What, a few legal documents? She killed him. She killed him. Now, ten years later, she wants to steal away my little brother? Now you listen. She's left me with nothing. It's about time you learned you don't get any rewards out of this life unless you make an investment. Sometimes I think I ain't got the brains. Good Lord gave a shiny brown rock. <laughs> I know what Starbuck has on you. He's gonna get you. Now, you give me money, 
And I'll tell you what he knows. One thing I've learned about Mr. Starbuck, he's a remarkable bluffer. He has nothing. He knows where the murder weapon is. He figured it out. I need $10,000. I know you keep money here. You give it to me, I'll go away. You'll never see me again. Well, I don't see exactly what I'd be buying. Well, you'd be glad you gave it to me. But I'm not going to tell you till I get the money. Here's 4,000. That's all you get. Now, how is he going to use a weapon that's been missing for 10 years? It has no fingerprints. It proves nothing. He said unless you used gloves to load it, which he thinks would be very difficult because it's a spring clip, that you probably used your hands, that he'd find a fingerprint on the inside of the clip. He said the oil that's used on the inside of a gun is water resistant, and it'll last. And where, pray tell, is this weapon after 10 years and countless police searches? It's in the pit on stage 16. He says it fell in there. It's been covered over ever since, never been used. He's going to be looking for it in the morning. You might retrieve the murder weapon from Mrs. Capstone, Sergeant. I didn't think I could win, Rachel. But apparently, after all these years, you're going to pay for killing my father. You haven't got anything on me. I've got an alibi. Vanity. It's one of the seven deadly sins. Once you got it, you can't get rid of it. What is this, more country hogwash from your daddy? I got to thinking about your movie, Big Island. Now, the studio had a print of it, but a vain woman's gonna want her own print. So, I checked through the old lab reports. Sure enough, on February the 6th, 1976, another print was struck and sent to the Capstone home. Now, Lieutenant Morrison here has a search warrant for your house, and I'm betting that we find that print. When we do, there'll be a hundred feet that's been cut out of it and spliced back in there. Here it is, Mrs. Capstone. My men are up there right now. We're going to take the film. We're going to show it to Carmelita. And I'll bet you that she can swear that that's exactly what she saw on the night of the murder. Why? Why did you do this? I was sitting in an air-conditioned bank, and I saw a bum outside. Your stepson. He had a little push cart with a bunch of old rags, bottles, cans in it. Smelled like someone else's garbage. I just had to find out what in the world could have happened in a man's life so young to drive him to those depths. Just a couple of days later, I come up with you. And that's why I'm being arrested? No. You're being arrested because you took a human life. The most fragile, delicate, most precious thing on the face of this earth. I guess I'll never be able to pay you back for this. 
Don't have to go around paying each other back for the things we do for each other in this life. We pay ourselves. But I've been doing some thinking along those lines and how that gun got in that hole. How? Well, what if your dad knew that she was trying to frame you? He'd have to get rid of the gun. And somehow or another, he got it into that pit. The most important thing is, the last thing he thought of in this life was you. I'm gonna be taking Charlie in with me. I just wanted you to know that as far as I'm concerned, he is my brother. I don't need a blood test to prove it. In that case, partner, that makes us square. Well, all in all, I figured it worked out pretty good. Charlie moved in with Steve, and Rachel's getting indicted for murder. Sometimes, in pursuit of our goals, we lose track of the things that will make us happy. My daddy told me that happiness is the only thing that we can give away without having. And looking at how this turned out, he must have been right. Thomas is in search of a young boy who mysteriously disappears on the next Magnum P.I. Monday at 4. Now, Bob Pizer and Deborah Silverstein bring you the latest news, sports, and weather on the news for Nightbeat next. Then Tom Hanks hosts Saturday Night Live with musical guest country singer Randy Travis coming up on Channel 4.